Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. Today, I wanna to show you how easily you can upgrade your SVG skills to go from something like this to something like this. As you can see, we have a nice morphing SVG icon here that toggles the team for us, and that sun actually changes in a moon, so it actually morphs to that shape. And you also get that nice glowing effect and the rays also start popping in one at a time. I've also seen some people use it this way, where you have a sun icon and a moon icon, and then you just animate this out and animate this in, and then just do a little bit of rotation, but I can't help to see that for one second this bloody moon icon disappears before the other one comes in. It's clear to me that it's a different icon popping up. So the way we're gonna do it is using just one SVG instead. See if you can tell the difference. If I toggle this, see how that disappears for one second? I guess you don't see it if you time it properly with your blinking. Okay, so how does this work? Let me guide you through the current code we have. So I just have an empty nav here, and this is the toggle that we are gonna modify. Okay, so I have nothing hooked up. We're starting from scratch. The only thing I have hooked up is for my application to detect whether we are on dark mode or light mode. So I'm using next themes for that. Again, you can do it in any way you want, uh, but it's pretty much one component here that gets wrapped up. So if we go to the root layout, as you can see, I have the Steam provider. By default, the team is set to system. And then in Tailwind here, I can do my dark mode and my light mode to modify those things. All right, so that's all that we have. So there's two things you can do. One is literally just head over to Lucid React and get your icons from here. But to be able to customize it just a tad bit more, what I'm gonna do instead is open up Figma. Now, whoa, 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 this is a programming channel. What are we doing here? I promise you, we're only gonna click like three buttons and we're gonna draw like a circle here. And that's all there is to it. Now check this out. I'm gonna go to Lucid and search for that sun icon that we used before. And all I'm gonna do is copy the SVG or download the SVG. I'm just gonna drag this SVG in Figma and I'm just gonna adjust it to the size of, of this frame here. So let's just expand it out like something like that, maybe a bit more so it takes up pretty much all the height of it. So there we go, now that this is adjusted to its size, what I'm gonna do is just grab all of these little vector shapes here, right click and say copy as SVG, and that's all I need. So I can go back here now and paste it to the bottom, and there we go, that's my SVG shape. So if we try to have a look at the shape to kind of try to figure out what's going on here, as you can see, we have one SVG, with a height of 98 and a width of 98. And there's the view box as well that we placed it into. As you can see, the first path here has a D property, which is your path. And as you can see, it's quite long because this is trying to create that circle for us. And all of these little paths here with the two, two values or three values, these are all the sun rays, okay? so. What we can do here, first of all, is to get rid of all the stroke, stroke width, and stroke line cap and line join, because we need to write it different, differently, right? We're in React, so the line here will not work. So what we can do is actually remove it from all of these paths here that are our uh, light rays, right? Our sun rays. So let's kind of separate it from here like that. And then let's get rid of all of these. As you can see, that looks much, much clearer. So we just have the paths. And instead of adding it to each individual one, what we can do is wrap this up in a group instead. So you can just do a G like that. Let's wrap this inside the group and we can apply the stroke color and the stroke width to this instead. So let's just add a class name here. And as you can see, just adding the group uh, tag here makes it so much easier to style all of these individual rays. So I can just add a stroke six and a stroke yellow and bish bosh bosh, we are done. Now this doesn't show up right now because I did remove the stroke and the fill on it, but we will add it back later with the animation, which we're gonna do right now. So uh, there's one thing I'm gonna be using for animation here, which is motion react. This is to get the staggering effect for all the individual rays popping up. Okay, so if you're familiar, you're probably familiar with Framer Motion. This is their new version here. Uh, so I just imported that motion, renamed it as M, and then we can use it. So what I'm going to do is convert the SVG, the paths here, and the globals over to M.SVG, M.Path. Now having this M tag on, I can create some sick animations using uh, some of these new props that you have available here. So one of them is gonna be setting the initial position of this animation, and then we're also gonna say animate here, like that. Okay, so initially, what do we want to do? Well, we want the stroke and also the fill opacity to be zero. Okay, so let's do that. We're gonna say initial fill opacity. I'm gonna set that to zero, and we're gonna say stroke 
opacity, set that to zero. So that's the initial. Now for the animate, let's open this up as well. Here, what we're gonna say is theme, like that question mark. Now let's import that from, uh, so, we can, so we know what theme we're using. So equals to use theme. Let's import this hook. And this hook should actually give us here, I believe if we can deconstruct the actual team. Yeah, so team, question mark. And actually this needs here in the animate, you gotta make sure that it's outside of the double curly brackets. So you're gonna see something like this team, question mark, and then you have that curly brackets, otherwise you have this curly brackets, all right? So an object on each side. So if team triple equal, equals, let's see, dark here, then we are gonna do everything in here, right? And if it's a light, then we're gonna do everything in the other object. Okay, so what do I wanna do here? Well, I wanna bring up the fill opacity and the stroke opacity, right? So let's do fill opacity. I'll do 0 0.35 here to kind of leave a glow inside. And then I'll do stroke opacity and I'll bring this up to one. So it's gonna have like a sharp edge, uh, but the inside's gonna be a little bit soft. I'm also gonna customize the color here, so you can just simply pass it here. So I'm gonna say, hey, this is gonna have a rotate of zero, but it's also gonna have a stroke and a fill of yellow. Now, if none of this is showing up, this is because we're running it here where it's on dark, so let's just quickly move that over to this other curly bracket here. There we go, cool. And here on the dark mode, I essentially wanna do the opposite. So I'm gonna keep the stroke width and the opacity the same, but I wanna change the stroke stroke and the fill to a different color. So I'm gonna pick blue for here. So when I click on this, let's see, look at that, it turns to blue. The only problem is the size of it, it's quite small, right? And the shape of it doesn't really look like a moon. So how can we change this to a bloody moon? Well, check this out. This D here is, represents the path to create the circle for the sun, right? So technically we can, get, we can just grab this and kind of separate it to its own variable. So if I cut that out, if I go up here, and I just do something like, hey, this is the sun's path. And I can set that equal to that. Okay, well, how can I get the moon path then? Well, check this out. Ready? It's gonna take two seconds, I promise. Two seconds. Here we go. Grab this, double click this, right? Double click on it until you see this, these little dots. Grab this little cur curvy bend tool. Click on the bend tool, grab kind of like here. Oh, would you look at that, we have a moon. Done. Grab it. We can grab everything again. Copy as SVG. You know what? Close Figma. Screw Figma. Bye. We don't need you. That's it. Look at that. This path here is your moon path. Cut this. Go up here. Right? We'll stick that in there. Now check this out. You don't need this. You can get rid of all of this. We just needed the path from there. Okay. And we don't need Lucid either. We can just go back here. Okay, so there's a compile error because D is like, hey, your D's missing. Oh gosh, is it? Oh no. Uh, so here, well, what's the default? Sun path, right? That's the OG that we want to see. So that looks still fine. However, when we animate to the dark mode here, we can explicitly change the path of that. So I can see on dark mode, I want to go to the moon path instead. Okay, and then here, so I'm just passing in as default there, but I can also animate this and say, hey, D, make sure this is on sun path as well. Okay, click. Wow, would you look at that? Look at it. Wiggle. It's wiggling. It's working. Okay, now to make this a little bit nicer, we added rotate zero here. Let's add rotate 360 here. Got it looking spazzy. There we go. See, it does a little flip now. That's pretty cool. And one last thing we can do is also increase the size of it. So here on the dark mode, this can be basically double the size to kind of fill up the rays as well. So I can say scale is to here on the moon path. So now you get this really cool transition. Look at that, how cool is that? Now that we got that ready, how can we create the effect where these little uh, sun rays disappear and come back and kind of stagger? Well, we can create two objects. One is going to be the rays variance here. And by default, we can place this on hidden. So the stroke capacity is going to be zero, right? So it's going to fade out. 
And you can also add a transition property here where you can stagger the children. So you can adjust the speed here. 0 0.05 is the one I found. And you can also pick a di direction. I went clockwise. If you want to do counterclockwise, you can do that as well. So basically you have a hidden and a visible property. So here we're pu pushing it back to stroke capacity of one. All right, so this goes on the actual like, like parent element, whereas the individual rays are gonna have this variant attached to them. We're basically taking the path length, right? Th these are lines. So the path length zero is not gonna show anything. If you go to path length one, it's gonna display the whole line. So we're starting from zero, opacity zero, scale zero as well. And then we're just bringing all of that back up. And the last thing here is just, we can also uh, like specify the duration for each each thing here so if you want the opacity to be a bit quicker you can also adjust that which is super super cool okay and that's all you need so you get these two two little objects again all this code is going to be on github so to be fair you can just copy paste a lot of it over but i wanted to show you just so you understand how these little things work because i feel like it can help you so so much uh, and, and cre just creating fun stuff, right? That's kind of the, the whole goal here, right? Create fun stuff that invoke emotions in people and they're like, oh, that's really cool. I wonder how they did that. Um, okay, so with these two now, we can just simply pop them in here. Okay, so we're gonna go here and we're gonna say variants on the uh, group tag here. And I'm gonna say raise variants like that. Initially, I'm gonna set the initial here equal to hidden. So you can do something like this where you set initial equal to hidden and not pass an object. So that'll just automatically recognize all the properties within here, which is super cool. So we'll set that like that. And then we can say animate equals to, and then here we can do a team check. We can check if this is on light mode, then that means that we can have our animation running. So we can say, what did we name this? Um, we named it, visible right visible otherwise i want this to be hidden so let's paste it like that and let's do a refresh and we also need to pass the variance down here so let's also change these to m paths so there we go we changed these to motion paths and i also add the variance here for ray variant which is this one again okay so now if we give it a go and we click on this as you can see they start all coming in nicely now the the direction of the direction is fine it's just the way these are organized is a bit off so i'm just gonna go through each individual one of these and kind of place them correctly so there we go i just kind of move them about and see kind of how they come in one by one and if we check now look at that pretty cool eh and finally to add the shine to the moon path here well we already have the path of the moon so what we can do is create another path here within the svg and as you can see i just passed the path as moon path and you can just simply position this absolute, right? So it goes on top of it. So position absolute with a top of zero, left of zero, and I simply added a little stroke color here. So stroke blue of 100, which is a bit lighter than this one. You can also do stuff with blending modes if you want, uh, but this works just fine. All right, and then again, we create a variant for this. So position absolute, make sure your par uh, pairing component here uh, element, I should say, your SVG has a relative on it. Otherwise, if you don't have this relative, then this path is not going to be positioned correctly anymore. And as you can see, I passed in a variant here called shine variant, and I did it from hidden again to visible, just like how we did for the other ones. How does the shine variant look? Well, let's have a look. It's super simple. We start with hidden, so opacity zero, scale two, just so we match the path, again, the size of it. And then we're doing a stroke dash array here. So five here represents basically kind of how much are we showing of that full path. Uh, so five here is gonna give you a little, little dot, basically. If we put this up to like 30, you're gonna see it's gonna be much bigger line. See, that's a nice big shine there. It actually looks... <laughs> That looks a bit better. I'm not gonna lie, I should have increased this. Let's try 20. Maybe that's gonna look a bit better. That looks pretty cool. It's a bit more obvious now, isn't it? So there we go. And then the dash, dash offset, I set that to zero because then you can just move the position of this wherever you want. And you can also do multiple, uh, you can pass down multiple values here. So start from opacity zero, go up to one, but then fade it back out. Same for the stroke dash offset here and go from zero, 50 to minus 150 and for the filter as well right start with no blur and then blur up and then go back out maybe the blur should start from two already let's see if that looks a little bit better yeah that does look a little bit better so start the blur and then start blurring out and here for the ease you want to make sure this is linear if you don't have linear it's gonna look choppy as heck 
Will it? <laughs> How does that look better? I swear to God, that looked much worse before. Okay. Never mind. Just ignore it. Ignore Ed. He has no idea what he's talking about. Now, you can't actually see the difference uh, because it's trying to interpolate between these three values and it's going to kind of like go ease out here and then it starts easing in and then easing out between these two values again. It's a bit hard to notice, but ad linear is going to make it look a tad bit smoother. I promise. And there we go. That's pretty much it. As you can see, there's... <laughs> There's not really much to it besides these variants to animate. Other than that, we're just grabbing the both paths here and then just animating them in and out. And that's just going to give you a much more like cooler effect than just a simple toggle. So hope you enjoyed this episode. Hope you found this helpful. Uh, we're back, baby. 2025, two, two, three videos a week we're doing. Awesome. I'm so hyped. Uh, also, I, I'll start showing some stuff of the new course platform that I've been building out. Wow, it's been like six months I've been added with this project. It's going to be super, super cool. So drop a like, drop a sub. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, thank you for your support. Just shut up. Just end the bloody video. Peace.